Agis and thought. I gave, I gave some serious thought. Brother Parks was one of our members, and I gave some serious thought sending him out to John MacArthur. And <laughs> seeing if he couldn't look down on him and convince him of the blood. I, uh, our old pastor, years ago, he went to, to a meeting with his son. And my pastor was way up in years, and and uh, he's sitting there with a meeting, and this guy got up and said, the, the Bible is not, uh, you can't really depend on the Bible. We don't know all the manuscripts and where they came from and so forth. You can't depend on the Bible. So we just want you to know that we believe the Bible, but, but we can't depend on every word of it. My old pastor leaned over and patted his son on the knee, and he said, Son, that, what that fellow said is true, as far as he knows. <laughs> When Mr. John MacArthur says the blood is still at the in the in the ground at the base of Calvary, I think he's telling the truth. As far as he knows. <laughs> I have one more item to bring on the platform, and uh, I guess you know what this is, don't you? That's the brazen altar. That's that's exactly the dimensions of the brazen altar. And uh, they, they took an ox on the Day of Atonement and killed it. Jack Patterson, are you available? Yeah. <laughs> While we bring the other piece of furniture, we'll sing this power in the blood. We're going to have a little Bible study. Be, be seated, please. Open your Bibles to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. You folks over here, We'll have to take by faith that I'm good looking, but we're indebted to our shop, wood shop teacher at Hammond Baptist High School. I lost his name all of a sudden. Yoder, yeah, Brother Yoder. Brother Yoder for making these for us. There's no way we could have the entire tabernacle or the court, of course, but these are the two main pieces of furniture I want to talk about tonight. This is the brazen altar where the sacrifice was given, offered, and this is, of course, the Ark of the Covenant, on top of which is the mercy seat, and uh, the beaten cherubim there uh, with their wings hovering over the mercy seat. Now, we're going to have a little Bible study. We're preaching later on in the week, but tonight I want to give you a Bible study. I think it will enlighten you. Our Heavenly Father, we come to the Word of God tonight. And I want to do it justice, and I pray you to help me as I teach. And help us on this first night of pastor school as we think of the blood. We vote for the blood tonight. Help us as we study about it. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 20, verse number 17. I want you to follow along with me very carefully now. We're going to read a lot of several verses in the Bible, numbers of verses tonight. I want you to follow with me as I do. And from Miletus... He, that's Paul, sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. All right, I want you to look at me for a minute. The elders of the church. Now, it says the elders of the church. Now, what church is talking about? It's talking about the church at Ephesus. I'll, I'll, uh, because it's the elders of the church. He's my leaders. He sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the church. The word church there is the word ecclesia in the Bible, which it almost always is which means a called out assembly. So this was a local body of believers. And by the way, I'll be saying more about this during the week. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the only church there is today, the local assembly. The doctrine of the universal church uh, was started by the Catholic church, which means universal. And from that came, it came down to the Protestants. From the Protestants, it came down to the non-denominational group. And they have spread, though there are some good people in that group. They've given us the Schofield Bible and other things that have given us error. The Baptist people, uh, originally we were called Anabaptists, and as far back as 1,015, 1,600 years ago, they were fighting for the doctrine of opposing the universal and invisible church and for the doctrine of the local church. And so it says here, and from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called 
the elders, now that's the word pastors, there are three uh, meaning, three words that mean the same thing in the Bible, have to do with the same office. One is elder, one is pastor, and one is bishop. Each of those words define the same office. One office, the uh, word elder, means that the pastor is supposed to have wisdom and guide the people in wisdom and counsel. And then the word bishop, which means overseer, means the pastor is supposed to oversee everything. I'd like you little peanut head preachers to get that while you're here. Those of you whose board members lead you around, and, and when you they say jump, you ask how high. I'd like you to understand that while you're here. Be a wonderful opportunity if you become a man while you're here. We can have, we can have a, a, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know how to word it without being vulgar, but we can change your, we can change your gender while you're here. Uh, and uh, there are other words that surgeons call it, but I can't use that in the pulpit. But. Uh, so the one word for the word pastors, the word elder, which means wisdom, counsel, love. The word bishop is the second word, which means oversee the entire program. Doesn't mean you're the dictator, it just means folks will think you act like one, that's all. And uh, so uh, the, um, and I say that, the chairman of my deacon sitting right behind me on the platform tonight, and he'll say amen to it. He just said amen to it. And it took him a while, but he came across, came around to it. But there's a third word for the word pastor, and that's the word pastor itself. The word pastor meaning shepherd, the one who protects the sheep, the one who feeds the sheep, the one who guides the sheep, and the one who skins the sheep. Anyway, uh, the, uh, so but it says that, that from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called for the elders of the, of the church. He's talking about the elders of that, the pa pastors, like we have me on the platform, we have a multiplicity of pastors. There I go. Multiplicity is what's the Greek word that I just use all over and over and over again. And when you're a chancellor of a college, you use a lot of Greek words like that: multiplicity and catty cornered and catty wampus and and uh, I just can quote it just like that over and over and over again. And but I've got to I've got to get down to your level. Uh, I'm not sure even I can do that. But anyway. Now, so Paul called for the elders, the pastors of the church. Now look down to verse number 28. Paul said, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. There's that word bishop there, the word overseer. And uh, now all the flock, okay. Now what church was it uh, that was their flock? The church at what? Tell me out loud. The church at Ephesus, a local church. Not talking here about the universal church. You wouldn't talk about it because there's this thing. You see, all Christians don't form a church. All Christians will someday form a church because the word church means a call out assembly. And all Christians have never yet been called out to assemble. And they will not be called out to assemble until the rapture. And according to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 23, then they'll be the church, become the church of the firstborn, assemble or church, if you please, in heaven. And they'll be in heaven. And then, and only then, will all Christians form the church. I make a big issue out of that because there are a lot of people floating around that think the church, local church, and that's all the kind of it is, is a mighty cute thing. And if some people haven't grown in the Lord a great deal where they can join the youth of Christ, they can belong to a local church. And uh, so uh, they, can, they can join anything. That, uh, but if you, can't, if you can't get promoted to the invisible church, then you can, uh, you can belong to the uh, local church. And that's mighty cute for we, we Christians to do. Um, the truth is, it's very strange when these invisible church people want to raise money. They always contact us in us visible churches to raise their money. And it's a very strange thing. Now, I make an issue out of this because I want to. Now, so look at verse number 28 again. Take heed, therefore. You know, normally we make you mad on Wednesday. I decided to start off right off the bat this time. And uh, so, uh, and the thing, you get paid for this lamb, but you pay for this lambasting. You paid forty dollars today for this chewing out I'm giving you tonight. Forty-five? That's because you rascal didn't pre-register. You didn't decide soon enough to come. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock for which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. That's the flock. 
at Ephesus to feed the church of God. Well, I'll declare. What church you talking about? He's talking about the church, the church of Ephesus. Up in verse 17, he told what church he's talking about. He said, feed the church of God. That's not an invisible universal church. That's the local church at Ephesus over which, uh, uh, over which uh, the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. Now, for right now, I want you to notice the term his own blood. Now, what did Jesus purchase with his blood here? He purchased the local church with his own blood right here. He's talking about the local church. He said, the church over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. And he said, that was the church at Ephesus, the called out assembly at Ephesus. So Jesus purchased that church with his own blood. Now, what am I saying? I'm saying that more was purchased on Calvary than just your salvation. Uh, 